it makes me think of something that I would, if I had to coin it, um, I would call it high touch marketing, quite literally something you can touch, but it's also just putting that little bit of extra effort. Yeah, and, and I'm seeing this as a trend right now where uh, book author after book author is sending me their books. You're not just getting a book in the mail. You're getting a book in a in a in beautiful packaging with tchotchkes. You know, Joe Polizzi sent me chocolate chip cookies. Um, but but this is what's leaving an impression as well. You did something I would say very different. You sent a handwritten note. Please accept this copy of Teenage Waste Brand for your reading pleasure. You discussed it on the show. It's in your branded purple colors as well. It's the attention to detail. This is what I would call high touch. Guitar playing. Well, guitar is what led me to creativity. I sing, and mm -hmm. I always thought that singing was the ultimate right brain creative outlet. And it turns out, actually, that singing is extreme left brain. Mm -hmm because there are notes on a page and there's a certain way to sing, otherwise you sing off key. However, the real artists are the ones that have found ways to actually break out of that, that silo, or break out of that container. Joseph, I'm so glad you mentioned that. This is a structured process. Once you get the technique down, once you get the chords down, once you get the scales down, once you're proficient at music, then you can improvise like crazy, but you can't improvise unless you've got the technique down. We always talk about the method and the madness, and mm -hmm. I, what I realize is technique and improvisation is the method and the madness. Yes. Years ago, I was working with one of the world's largest battery manufacturers, and it was one of the worst performing plants in the company's uh, spectrum of, of plants around the world. And I went in and the plant manager said, help us. And I just talked to people and he said, okay, you know, we got to fix the machinery. We got to fix the, the, you know, the, the culture. We got to fix this. We got to fix that, the, the work procedures, the tools. I said, yes, you do need to fix all that. But you want to know what they wanted? Paint the bathrooms. They walked in there and they didn't feel they were respected. So they didn't feel cared about. What I've discovered is most problems in the workplace are what I call pebble in the shoe problems. They're pretty easy to fix for low cost. Only we only discover them if we put ourselves in the other person's shoes. This is just amazing. The more expertise we gain in a given area, the more emotionally numb we can become ironically growing knowledge about a passion driven pursuit can diminish the emotional component of our passion for said pursuit. The more expert you become in something, the more analytical you become about it. And the more that you can, you start to, you start to see it as part of a pattern and it becomes less and less easy for you to see it with fresh eyes and see it with that initial passion. I think of golf. I just see how people, the more they play, and the more they're you know, putting in their 10,000 or 100,000 hours, the less they love it. The other thing that was great about this article was talking a little bit about how you can reignite that and how you can just really focus on how I feel about this rather than turn off the feeling and let that go.